Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. You guys are amazingly patient, unscripted and unrefined, but we're here. And uh, my guest tonight is Debbie Derryberry. Hi, glad to be here. Thank you. Oh, it's my pleasure to have. You. It's our pleasure to have you, and it's Mishka's pleasure Mishka's to be in your here. lap. Yes, naturally. Happy nice. place. Yep. All right, we ready, Mr. Whittem? Let's do this. It's time for voiceover body shop right now. <laughs> It's time for VoiceOver Body Shop. Brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the makers of Source Connect. VoiceOver Heroes, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website doesn't have to be a pain in the butt. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Widow. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Welcome yeah. once again. <laughs> Entering, entering the studio now is our special audience member. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, our guest tonight is Debbie Derryberry. We've got a lot of great stuff to talk about, uh, but you know, Debbie is one of the Hollywood's most active voiceover artists. She's probably best known for the voice of Jimmy Neutron. It's Jimmy Neutron. Got a blast. Got a blast. Okay, there you go. <laughs> uh, let's see, Maureen Bridget. Uh, Philip, Ken, Scott, and Nurse Bet uh, Beatrice, Beatrice Beatrice on Bill Burr's Netflix hit show, F is for Family. Bill Burr. Among man, other things. Burr. You're yeah. also a very talented musician and songwriter, too. Thank you. There's so many things that she does. Welcome back to our show. You're one of our favorite people to have on here. Thank you for having me, Dan. And George, always a pleasure to be here for VOBS. I like to just say it. Yes. And, and, and Nishka's <laughs> thrilled to have you here, too. Hi, everybody. It's my show. It's the Miska Show. Thanks for being here. <laughs> anyway, you are a very busy lady these days. You've been doing a lot of work. Of course, you've been infirming, I guess, for a couple of months. Uh, but you've been doing all this stuff. Like, what are you working on now? Or are you working at all or still recovering from... Um, let's see. I am working... Um... Of course, on all the stuff I can't tell you about, but I have a couple <laughs> video games recording, and um, uh, I just released a new kids' song called I'm a Great Recycler. That the <laughs> video is out on my YouTube channel, and it just won the NAPA Award, the National Parent Products Award. Oh, so I'm good. thrilled about that. So if any of you have um, little kids or just act like one, you can go to my website and watch I'm a Great Recycler. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are voice actors, which some people might think is, what are you? Acting you're just like a, kids? Acting like a kid. <laughs> but I'm, I'm still working and auditioning, and uh, I had a little back surgery, so I sat for a lot of sessions for um, a couple months, and now I'm able to stand again for sessions. Um, I also just released a three-part virtual class um that follows my book voiceover 101 and um <laughs> i know it's green it probably doesn't show up but um i uh wanted to have a class so that people could afford my class uh, even though i'm not there in person it's very affordable and you can take like three hours of me um virtually yeah, nice. so that just released which is really um made me feel really good to be able to give that yeah. nice so so the title is Voiceover 101, mm -hmm. How to Succeed as a Voice Actor. And, uh, but the business has been changing a lot. You and I have talked yeah. about this. That's the second the, the edition. Second edition. Now it makes <laughs> total sense. Uh, what do you think has changed from when we all started doing this? And you've been doing this a little longer than me. So, But what have you seen changes, especially in the very recent past? Well, I think as in any um, job, 
description across the planet, it's now acceptable to do your VO virtually. And I think a lot of、um, Mishka wants down. Will、yeah. you help me out there? <laughs> I think、um, there was resistance because, as in any company, that they didn't know if people could really do it virtually. And being forced into it,、um, the places that I work with, mostly you know, cartoon studios, have realized they can do it virtually. And I think it's a little more challenging animation wise because there's so many highs and lows.、Right. You know, I mean, audiobooks people have been doing it virtually forever because it's just you and your booth and you do、right. your own editing.、Mm-hmm. But、um, with animation, now the voice artist has to be a really good engineer and, you know, hire these guys so that you can set your stack so you don't over modulate all the time and have a decent、um, interface. I found that. Things like for the home person, I love the Scarlet, but I don't think it works as great for animation just because of the highs and lows.、Yeah. But、um, I have that Apollo Twin, and of course,、mm-hmm. I like the way it works fine. But that's one of the big changes, of course, is being able to work from home. And it's forced those of us、um, who do work from home into having to be more、uh, hands on with the engineering. Thank goodness、yeah. there's you guys that we can call and say, ah! But wouldn't it be cool if there was an audio interface that was made for voiceover actors? Yeah, because it's all designed for making music. Is、mm. there one? Is that what we're leading up to? I feel like. Is there one? I feel like you're getting ready for the big pitch here, something I don't know about I'm, yet. I'm no, not promising no, anything. We haven't found one yet. I'm just saying. Uh huh. You know, you know I like having、um, two inputs because I have my microphone、mm-hmm. at. My console,、mm-hmm. and then I have one in the booth.、Mm-hmm. So if I have a student in the booth, I can still talk to them. I suppose if I had to get by on just a solo, I could,、yeah. but I like the fact that the Apollo Twin has, I know it's not called the Apollo Twin because it has two of those holes, but、mm-hmm. it does. <laughs> yeah.、Um, no, but yeah, you, you, you wear multiple hats. Yeah. You you're, wear you're, multiple you're hats and you have to. You're a voice actor, you're, you're essentially a producer because you're、yeah. producing yourself, you're a director and coach. So, you have to have these different modes of operation, which definitely adds a level of complexity for yeah, sure. But I think it's really nice that the other end is accepting of it. Yeah. And a lot of the software companies、um, may have had to scramble, but they figured it out so that there's this thing called、um, looping on,、mm-hmm. um, on films where、mm-hmm. like 10 people will come together and you'll, you'll do ADR on a film and everybody will have to be, okay, you're all screaming at one time because the walls are falling down. <laughs> and so they know, try to have you do that remotely but live? Yes. However, the- I mean, you can't do it on a Zoom because there's all the delay. <laughs> right, right. But these companies, like, I think it's, it's I want to say Clear Feed, but I think it's Clean Feed,、mm-hmm. um, have figured out a way so that an engineer can take all these components, all these inputs,、yeah. and hear something simultaneous. Yeah. The engineer hears everything they need to hear. You individuals don't necessarily. Hear the other nine actors、right. while they're screaming. And then the director <laughs> doesn't always hear it right away. So there's that extra step、yes. where the、yes. director has to let the engineer line it glue up. Glue it together.、Mm. And glue it and line it so that、yeah. he can see it and say, yes, I approve, yes, I don't. Yeah. But I think、um, But it's possible. It is. The bottom line is it's possible. It's really crazy yeah. Yeah. all the things that are possible now.、Yeah. And it's also nice because you know that we're going to Cancun tomorrow, all of us, and we're going to be working from there. I'm kidding. <laughs> But we could. Checking my phone right now if I have to. <laughs> we can work from、yeah. anywhere as long as there's internet. Yeah.、Mm-hmm. Now, we've only been telling all the producers this for like the last 10 years. You know, you could talk to people all over the country. There are a lot of talented people out there.、Mm-hmm. No, no, no. We have to use this. Well,、mm-hmm. that's the bad part of all of this. Yeah. Is that now our competition pool has grown globally. Right. Mm-hmm. As long as they can stay up that late. <laughs> Or get right, up right. really early for doing、right. stuff in India and stuff.、So. Mm-hmm. Which is really great for everybody who wants to get into voiceover who doesn't have necessarily live in LA.、Right. Yeah.、Mm-hmm. But there's always that twist where the audition will say, you have to be able to at least come into the studio if we need you to. Right.、And、Hollywood wants to work with Hollywood because. It's, it's a giant、Hollywood. family. It's,、yeah. it's a very social thing. It's like the new Netflix series, Hollywood aside, 
which you should check out. It's very interesting. It's a very familial thing. And, you know, they want to hire their friends and their family and their neighbors and their community. It's so communal. It's yeah. very warm and fuzzy. I think particularly voiceover is, um, I don't, nothing against on-camera actors, mm -hmm. but I do think the voiceover family community is, um, I don't know, a little tighter, a little we are. kinder, a little, um, at least I just enjoy the voiceover community so much. Well, we're, we're not virtual, we're not actual physical com competition, like going into a casting lounge and staring everybody down because yeah. it's all anonymous. And so we all figure, look, if we all sound good, we all look good. One person sounds bad, all the home studio voice actors, every, every producer, oh, the home studio, we don't want to hear that. Right. So, mm -hmm. And for a lot of video games, when I audition, there's um, a common direction that they want to test your studio. So there's no, um, what do you call it when you... No East Floor. You, but you can't put any um, doodads on your audition. You can't run your stack on it. Oh, yeah. You yeah. can't do anything. You want to hear right. it Expanders. unprocessed. Thank you for that word. <laughs> word retrieval skills are not it's my na forte. It's not getting good or better here either. So. <laughs> good or better. It's not getting good or here. Unbeeped uh, <laughs> 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 Yeah, that's what they want. <laughs> yeah, so the non-processing of it means that you have to make sure that um, I mean, yeah, I won't process it, but I might run in if I had too much coffee and take out my teas. Mm -hmm. Teas are the little things that show up on your recording that are this noise. That doesn't really travel on the mic, does it? You know what? Zoom can't we hear that it. noise. When yeah. I'm Zooming students, I'm like, I'm trying to teach them TSK. Yeah. And this is how you TSK. But you can hear me, but I, yeah, the other end of the Zoom can't hear yeah. that noise. Yeah, cause it's because Zoom has this extremely... Got noise cancellation. Yeah, I hate to it. bring up the letters AI. Let's yeah. just say BJ. I um, okay. It has this thing called BJ, <laughs> and it learns about. No, that's not good either. Uh -uh. <laughs> CK. That's good. Go with. Okay, CK. CK. It has this thing called CK, and it figures out what voice is and what isn't voice, and it tries to figure it out. My daughter is also getting some voice coaching, and she <laughs> occasionally will do like a creature sound, uh -huh. and it won't send the audio. Mm -hmm. Zoom goes, that's not human. We're going to take that out. Right. I'm so you have to go to into the settings um, and you have to turn animal off the auto. Sounds. Right. Yeah, you have to set it in low reduction, like the lowest is setting. Is that what it is? It's yeah. not in, there's something in the upper corner of Zoom that says. Well, that's original sound. For, there's original sound. Do you want mode. that on or off? If everybody's wearing headphones, you can do on, original sound on. Okay. And that will turn off all the echo cancellation and the noise reduction and all that. Rot. And then for the. To because I teach animal sounds and yeah. they're like, oh, what is that? You, I see your mouth, but there's no meow. Yeah, I know. I see you barking. Zoom does this. There's no bark. That's so funny. And so, I, yeah. I'm trying to teach the elephant noise, yeah. which is a trumpet noise that you go up. It's I don't know if he's gonna pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. nice. um, Zoom doesn't want nothing to do with that noise. No, it doesn't. At all. Fortunately, no, it doesn't. we're not on Zoom. So it's <laughs> yeah, we're not on Zoom, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> I will we, attack whatever it is. We need more animal sounds in the studio. Oh, yeah, really? At least she's not barking. That's so, she doesn't like that. One of the things that a, a lot of people who want to get into anime, mm -hmm. what does it take to get in? I mean, it's probably much harder than it used to be, and it was never easy in the first place. I think, you know what's the hardest, at least I think so, is uh, given its voice acting, you have to be a good actor. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm assuming that anyone wanting to get into voice acting, especially animation, is a good actor. And that you have studied voiceover and you know mic technique. Because I think in animation mic technique is more important than in any other yeah. facet of VO because there's so many highs and lows. Yeah. And um I think one of the uh hardest things is I'm just having a little brain fart right now That's okay. because I had a really good thought about this um, is, is getting the auditions yeah. yeah so a lot of people who want to get an animation first thing is I want to book a Nick Nickelodeon series or a Disney princess mm -hmm. huh. well there's just some major obstacles in the way <laughs> one of them is that these days the a-list uh, on-camera celebrities are the ones getting the lead roles. Not always, but for the most part. Mm -hmm. And secondly, to get those auditions, you have to have a great agent. 
And for animation, there's probably only 10 to 12 agents that actually receive these. Mm -hmm. And to get with one of those 10 to 12 agents, you have to be someone that they can't, that they don't have yet. Mm. Like, do they have a Debbie Derryberry? Do they have how many guys between 40 and 50 do they have? How many mm -hmm. teens? How many? So you you want to find slots agent, and a giant grid that they're kind of filling in. Yeah, you like want to find that that yeah. fishbowl that has room for you. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the the question is, can people still break in? Because yes. a lot of people want to do it, but what's what does it take to push yourself to that level? I have seen people succeed by writing their own series and putting mm. themselves in it mm. and releasing it on I'm looking at you <laughs> <laughs> um, there is a uh, loophole in the Screen Actors Guild where you can uh, create a project and uh, make it for new media and put yourself in it Taft Hartley yourself which means get yourself in SAG and whether you make it or not, or whether it airs or not, or whether it's successful or not, boom, you're in SAG. But maybe it is successful, you know? Maybe you have something like that little snail, what's her name? The one on YouTube? Oh. Snail oh, yeah. on YouTube. You know, the movie that, oh, come on, that um, the Kyoto Brothers just did this nice little... Oh my gosh, I, had, I know Myrtle what it the is. Snail. No, yeah, um, I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Our demographic is not. You guys in this room. all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Many of you watching know. But they're all yelling at the camera. Out. They're yelling at their computer. Put it in the chat. Put room. it in the chat. <laughs> Please put it in the chat. <laughs> but that started out as just somebody's baby. Yeah. Right. And these little things can succeed. So that's one way of making your own project. Also, a lot of people feel bad about approaching family members or the uncle of a family member who you knew. Or the brother of someone you went to college with. Mm. That's kind of the way it happens. It's called Hollywood yeah. nepotism. Mm -hmm. And it's a real thing. It's a family yep. thing. Or yeah. you meet people who are repped by an agent that you want to be with. Well, that agent might not look at your demo, no matter how great it is, unless you have a referral. Mm. So you're right, Dan. It is very hard, but there are ways in. But you have to find the place that needs you right. and be able to step up to the skill. Right. There are a lot of people who want back in VO now and they never learn the technical end of it. Mm. And so if they say, I want to sign with this agent, are you able, if that agent sends you auditions, are you able to record them quickly and turn them around, edit them and get them back to that agent? No, but my boyfriend has a studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it, the boyfriend may not be available. Yeah. You have to do it yourself. You can't depend on anybody else. Yeah, right. But you have to have their home phone numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Not our home phone numbers. We have websites. You have you to be able to get a hold of these <laughs> <Yeah>. guys. <laughs> I mean, I can't tell you the times I've called Dan or George and I'm like screaming out of my mind, ah, I'm really done. They're like, calm down, Debbie. Just push this button push on the button left. Push that button there. <laughs> <gasps> you're oh, a there god. <laughs> anyway, if you're just joining us, our guest is the one and only Debbie Derryberry. And we're talking about animation and voiceover in general. If you have a question for her, throw it in the chat room. Because Jeff Holman is actually here in the studio with us, taking down all your questions and making sure that we get to ask them in our next segment. And I'm so happy to answer any animation, voiceover, any kind of questions you guys have. Excellent. Anything? Anything yet, Jeff? Is it there's some questions actually we got before the show too oh, that are oh in there. good to know well, but um, those go those get first in line when yeah we go to the this questions. is a golden opportunity you guys <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it's free right now mm -hmm. there's four questions already okay oh. excellent good to hear that so what can people do if they want to get into this what do they need to improve to increase their chances let me guess, it's not imitating other characters that already Read exist. the book. Because <laughs> that seems to be, I, mean, I do it really good. X, Y, Z. Oh, Let that me guess. Is, people will say, you know, I want to get into voiceover. I can do a really good imitation of. Yeah. Well, that is a part of voiceover, and it's called impersonations. True, yeah. But it's not um, coming up with organic characters. It's a really amazing um, skill yeah. that I am not privy to. I can't do it. But so many people are, and 
things come up where they need that. So you'll get an agent. Maybe that's your shoe in. Maybe you let the agent know I can do these characters spot on. That doesn't mean you can steal one of the lines from the movie and duplicate that line, but you can take a fresh line that he, that actor has never done before, and you can say it in that person's voice and act in that person's and voice and act in it. Act so as that person. Yeah. A couple of things uh, an agent might look for on your resume that might uh, get you in either the door or in some of these um, workshops um, is improv training. Mm -hmm. It has become so important and something that they they look for, and it can put you uh, above other people who don't have this improv training, and you can get improv training in any city in the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, here in L.A., there's the biggies, you know. There was their second city, or there's the, the groundlings, and there's all kinds of offshoots of any of these mm -hmm. that you can take improv from. And it's a certain set of skills, and it's formula, and you learn it, and it helps you in auditions where they have the keyword make it your own make it your own means you can add words that aren't in the script and be funny and fluff it up <coughs> if it doesn't say make it your own you stick to the script except in animation you add sounds um, which is a lot of what I teach because people may do a very nice audition but they do the same audition that 90 other people do. Mm. And it's those 10 people that do those little extra things. Yeah, the surprises. Yeah. yeah. Like if if the line is, I've got a surprise for you, and it's a little kid. I've got a surprise for you. They're going to get a bunch of auditions that sound just like that. Mm -hmm. But they're going to get some auditions that, that look at the stage direction before and after that says, <laughs> she's running in and talking at her dad who's across the room and she's laughing. And right. that sounds like, <laughs> I've got a surprise for you! <laughs> Which right. is a lot different than, I've got a surprise for you. Right? Yeah. Right. yeah. So being able to know how to read a script, read the stage direction, and incorporate that and make your audition stand out. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they then, always but, give you, though, they give you, like when you, when you are auditioning, how much of the script are you getting are you getting like a page are you getting a scene or uh, what that do you is get a to work great with? question all of the above <laughs> usually just your lines with um maybe the the attitude or um with sarcasm or yeah. um sad and so it's up to the actor who has taken acting classes and knows what scene study is and knows how to um, come up with a character and a backstory and to say, why am I saying this? Mm. You know, you may have to make it up. It's usually there. It's usually pretty clear. So sometimes they don't give you anything. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, if it's a video game, we never get the script. Oh, yeah. Not even until you get under, to the session. It's under lock and key, right? It's yeah. like it's extremely secretive. That's yeah. why you have to really love your director because they set it up for you. Mm -hmm. But for um, some shows... They will give you a scene, mm -hmm. which is awesome because you actually know what's happening. Mm -hmm. But then a lot of actors don't read the scene. They're like, blah, 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 my line, blah, 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 my <laughs> line, blah, 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 my line. <laughs> they may not say blah, blah. They say that other BS Well, some word. of them do, but uh, <laughs> I've been known to do that. Myself. BS, BS, my yeah, line. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. uh -huh. right. does, does it help to sometimes read the line that's feeding yours, at least in your head, so you... Absolutely. I would say sometimes I read it out loud, but then you, in your editing, you go and clip it out. Oh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of tricks to uh, springboarding off the previous line. For instance, if um, somebody said, what are you wearing in the party tonight? And my line was, the red dress. A trick is to steal that word from the line just before yours. Oh, the party? Oh, I'm wearing the red dress. See how I stole the word the party? Mm -hmm. That wasn't in my line. Mm. But it's there, and it's for everyone to see. Mm -hmm. And you can leave that in your line, and it lets the director know, the casting director, that you've, you've done your homework. Yeah. You know what's going on, and it livens up your line. Mm -hmm. And it gives you some place to go. So mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. There's just so much to take into account. So it's mm. it's a simple question. How do you excel and and get the VO well, uh, jobs? Yeah. Well, I mean, just a, generally. Yeah. Uh, uh, things like that. Generally, you make a tape, you get an agent, you audition and book. Right. Boom, boom, boom. boom. <laughs> it's that you easy. Read the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Practice, practice, practice. Well, that's practice is always. You've got to be constantly learning and constantly practicing. And yeah. practicing how to do the the edits too, and mm -hmm. being being good at knocking it out and not being afraid of it. Because honestly, you guys, if I can edit my own auditions, anybody can do this. Um, not as well as these guys, but good well, enough to get by. Coming on the show and asking questions is another great way to do it. Some yeah. people yes. are much better at doing that. We see you guys in this chat. Every week, some of you, literally every week, every week, <laughs> and you're absolutely students of everybody that comes on this show, like Debbie, and you have a leg up because you're learning this stuff. You may have to ask the same question twice, yep, because you know you don't remember everything. Right. But if you're asking the question, you you have a big better chance. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So we have a pile of questions, right, Jeff? That's right. All right. Well, we're going to take a break, and we're going to get to those questions. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with Debbie Derryberry and your questions right after this. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. VoiceOverEssentials.com has the ultimate answer for mic safety. Look, your mic is the most valuable part of your audio chain, so protect it from boom stand disaster. It's the ABS, the adjustable boom stop. It's simple, ingenious, and infinitely adjustable. The padded non-slip pouch fits almost any size boom arm. It has a unique double loop webbing system for an unlimited angle of the down strap. It works with tripod and solid round bases. A strong articulated strap keeps your boom where you want it without weights, sandbags, or knuckle busting tightening of the boom clutch. The light gray webbing lets you mark and repeat stand settings for just the right spot for you or anyone else who uses your microphone, saving time and guesswork. This is the simple solution that simply works. You'll kick yourself for not having thought of it. Lock it in place with our ABS, the adjustable boom stop. Get it now at voiceoveressentials.com. Okay. Hey, everybody. If you hear something wrong with the show, let us know because we do pay attention to the quality, so it's important to us. Anyway, George the Tech here to tell you about our sponsor, Source Elements. The creators of Source Connect and a lot of other tools that are used in big time productions every single day to remotely record talent all over the world and integrate that into the production process. Because really why Source Connect is still so incredibly popular is that it works in the production's workflow seamlessly. That's one key reason they love it. When they record that voice talent into Pro Tools, which most of the producers are going to be using, that audio is already in the production. And now the client, who's almost always going to be listening to that session, gets to hear you in context, in the edit. They get to hear you with the music, everything else. And very quickly, the client can hear the way you will sound in the finished product. They get instant sort of approval, as it is a war, of how the audio is going to sound. This is why, and just one of many reasons why it's so successful and why you should probably be familiar with it. Start learning how it works. You can get a free demo. Head over to source-elements.com and, and just get familiar. They have so much great learning content over, over there as well. They've really upped the training and content to become more familiar with it. So anyway, thank you, Source Elements. Source Connect, everybody check it out. And let's get back to more great questions with David Derryberry right after this. Hey there, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th, with the ACX Masterclass. We're coming up on a full decade, just a few months shy of the training that we've been offering on how to make ACX a place where you can build a business as an audiobook narrator. And all this week and all next week, we're celebrating with a series of free video training sessions on how to set up your business, what it takes to be an audiobook narrator, uh, what you can expect in terms of the equipment and the production process and working with rights holders, the authors and publishers who have books that they want you to read. Just go to acxmasterclass.com. 
and you'll get all the details. There'll be a link right there for you to see the videos. And we'd love to be part of the reason that you end up creating an audiobook narration production practice, that you become an audiobook narrator. Join us. Absolutely free, great information, acxmasterclass.com. That's acxmasterclass.com. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. I said, um, what do you mean by rewarding? Is it financially or emotionally? But I s said this before. I'm just going to say it again. Uh, that you all, as an actor, you always hope for that one job that launches you, that people know you by. And for me, that is Jimmy Neutron. Because um, it seems like everybody around the world seems to know who Jimmy Neutron is. Uh, so... That would be that answer, but I, I just forgot about Little Dogs on the Prairie until you said that. I, wow, that brought back memories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was Thanks. a question. That was a just to reiterate because we lost some audio. That was a question from Catherine Jade Jarvie. And Hi, she, Catherine. She'd, Thanks for watching. She mentioned that Little Dogs on the Prairie. Yeah. What's oh. the decade for that one? Oh, I gotta say, <laughs> it was the nut. The 90s? <laughs> oh. the, the early 2000s? Yeah. No, uh -oh. in the 90s. Before time began. That's right. We didn't have cell yeah. phones then. Yeah. Uh, and it came out on VHS. <laughs> OMG. Uh, Sarah oh, Switek Lord. asks, how many takes should you do in an animation audition? I mean, this question always comes mm -hmm. up. Should I do one? Should I do two? Should I do five? <laughs> Um, and then how do you differentiate? It's a really, really good question, and I struggle with that sometimes, too. Mm. I do one take if I'm giving one character. If they say, um, give me two takes and you can come up with another character, then you do a second, uh, a second character. I think if you're going to do just a similar take, that you're wa then you're wasting everybody's time. Just do one take. Unless you have a different accent, a totally different attitude, age, um, mouth, uh, speech impediment. Uh, unless it's a real different character, just one. And they and they, and do they ever say we want two takes? Does that ever um, happen? <laughs> not usually in an animation audition. Yeah. Um, sometimes they will say they want numerous takes, but they'll give you the parameters for it gotcha gotcha you know they want it's not it like an in ABC. america just they, do it three yeah. different ways they don't say that really they mm. they give you like direction i mean i imagine that it's out there and it does yeah. happen i'm not saying it doesn't happen yeah. just for the most part you figure a casting director has probably five parts to cast for a show yeah there's you hear this all the time there's <laughs> 20 agents out there how many auditions are they going to get they're going to get through five seconds of your audition. So that's why I, when I coach people, I always work on the first line more than anything else. Because mm. really, that's all they're going to hear, honestly. Yeah. Unless yeah. it's really stellar, then they might hear you to the end. If I'm giving two takes and they're both brilliant, I will slate Debbie Derryberry two takes. As opposed to Debbie Derryberry take one. Mm. Yeah, they'll know the second take's coming, but I'd rather say two takes. Um, it's just... My little trick, because mm -hmm. um, I think they know coming from me, it's going to be a different take, a different character. But yeah, you just don't want to bombard these poor casting directors. Poor mm -hmm. things. Their ears turn to jelly after a while. Well, every day. <laughs> <laughs> day after day, except when they're actually casting something. Um, well, our very own Jeff Holman right here yeah. in the studio, you mentioned earlier that you had to work sitting down a lot, but do you normally work standing up? Is For animation, I always work standing up if I can. Um, uh, as I said, I had this little back injury, so I had to sit for a lot of my auditions. And it was difficult for me because um, so many of my jobs are, you know, animation requires all this energy to get it out, the sound out. The um, I have this one job, I just bark. Mm. And it's hard <laughs> to bark sitting down. And it's, I get really hot and flustered. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a good thing about having a home booth. You can take your clothes off. <laughs> or exactly. take a cami in your, your, right. <laughs> your gym top. <laughs> um, yeah. If it's a not so uh, demanding animation job, 
I will sit. But um, I think for the most part, I find that I, I get that exuberance and that bigger sound if I can stand up. Yeah. Well, physicality is a really important part of doing animation voices yeah. or any yeah. acting for that matter on, on mic. I think some people tend to forget that uh, they're, they're acting and they just think they have to talk loud to the mic. And because, uh, you know, George and I get style. stuff all the time. It's like, I, I got to be loud. But mm -hmm. if you're physical, you know, and with what you're doing, maybe even acting it out, that mm -hmm. also adds to the expression of what you're doing. It really does, Dan. And that's another reason why when and if you build your booth, know what you're building for and accommodate it because you you want to be able to at least get this big in your booth mm. for animation mm -hmm. because um and and you want to do a lot of mic training with your mic because you need to know where it is i mean i still whack my mic and then my take <laughs> will be ruined because i've Sim. been physical and we all do yeah whack a mic <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this one's from Grace. You want Grace to get Newton. Yeah, she's she's asking, what's the difference between doing animation acting and then doing the voice acting for gaming? Nothing, <laughs> nothing at all. It's all uh, digging deep and um, being able to jump from one emotion to the next, and being able to have it be organic. Um, I think for me the biggest difference is that usually in animation I get the script. So I get to know what's happening. But in video games, you don't get a script and you have to rely solely on your director to set up the scene for you. I do this one video game that I've been doing for a long time called uh, Guild Wars 2. I do the voice of Timey. And <clears throat> there's, you know how each video game has their own world and the names of their dragons and the names of their cities and they're all made up, and they're very difficult to say and learn. And so the director will, the, the <clears throat> I should say the, the writer for that section, because, of course, in video games, there's writers for each section, each mm. expansion, each chapter. They will give you the setup. And so I always have a piece of paper. I always tell my students, have a piece of paper and a pencil. Not digital. Do not depend on digital when you're doing an animation or video game session because it takes a little extra time and there's no time to waste. So if you're going to take up their valuable time by just saying, oh, hold on, my, it's not working, my pencil, my digital pencil is out of battery, just have a pencil and a paper. And I mm -hmm. write down the whole setup and I write down the names and I write down the people who are telling me this. And so for video games, you have to be able to process <laughs> all that pretty quickly and to depend on your director to say what's just happening in this scene. And then I use my acting chops and I incorporate all of that and I give them a few different takes. And in animation, you should have done your homework. You read the script. Sometimes they even give you access to the storyboard. So you should do your homework and know what's going on. It moves even quicker in animation mm -hmm. because the director doesn't have to lay it out for you so hard. Mm. Um, that's why I found the, the biggest variation. Mm -hmm. How about the length of the sessions? Are they, are they the same length of session? Um, for me, if, if you're doing a Nick cartoon, say a 22 minute or then they record you all separate now. So yeah. my sessions will be anywhere from 15 minutes to maybe half an hour, maybe 45 minutes for, um, for that session. But so that's not, they don't look at it like, well, we got you. We, you're going to be with us for two hours, whether you're done or not. Well, the contract gives you four hours. Four hours, yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't take that long because you go from your line to the next line. Video games, they uh, can book you for an eight-hour day. It's usually a four-hour session. They usually use all four hours because there's all this time taken with setup, and they have to break you every hour, and... Um, they have a little more juggling to do because they have to save the screaming for the end. Mm. In video games, there's always the screaming, and that <laughs> it takes a while. Yeah. And then there's always the the library <clears throat> um, with your character. There's always the the library of of all the sounds that this character is going to do, and then they'll you know lay it out for you. And that takes time mm. to do. Right. 
Once again, we're talking with Debbie Derryberry. We still got time for a few more questions here, so we let's keep moving six on. Six in here. the queue. Um, Eddie Furier, who has a lot of kids, has a question. He wanted to be here. I know this for a fact, and he's <laughs> oh, just Eddie. disappointed he couldn't be here. Um, but he says I'm a huge fan, and how often does do you coach child actors, kids? All the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can go to my website or go to calendly.com and um, just schedule a session. Um, I really would love for everybody before they coach with me to read my book, Voiceover 101, How to Succeed as a Voice Actor, because then you'll know my language. Good idea. But I do coach kids and adults. Mm -hmm. And I find that sometimes if the kid is um, already an old hat at VO, although I charge by the hour, I will charge by the half hour if that audition only takes mm. a half hour. I have a lot of kids all over the world who coach with me and... They're all set to go. They just need that little help to get from reading it plain to reading it like the script wants it. And it goes pretty quickly. Are they looking for a lot of kids? Because you know, a lot of the cartoons that I used to watch when I used to watch cartoons with somebody, it was adult actors usually playing kids. Are they starting to use more children in these types of productions? It's a good mixture, Dan. I would say that... Uh, Companies like uh, Disney, Disney Junior, they will hire kids uh, more often than they ever have. However, directors who have directed kids and know that there are adults who can do it and maybe uh, it's easier for that director to work with adults, if they can hire an adult, they will. But I will say there's a, so much work out there for kids. Mm. Good to know. Because they want to carry that voice season by season, year after year after year. And, well, and if you're looking at year after year, well, I know they do a lot of recasting at, at Disney, so yeah. they'll yeah. recast that Disney voice. But, gotcha. Yeah. you know, for something that's an adult swim, they'd much rather, well, they need an adult because there's it's foul adult. language, <laughs> even <laughs> it's if it's depraved. a kid. But if it goes on for many seasons, yeah. you're better off. I think, getting an adult who can sound like a kid who's not going to enter puberty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Aaron S. on YouTube says, do you, help, uh, do you help with animation demos? Like, do you uh, coach someone through a demo? I do. Um, <clears throat> sometimes I take people from nothing to a full demo. Um, yeah, I help people mm -hmm. with demos. Um, you know, my schedule's kind of full, but there is always room on Calendly, and it's not something that we do in one session. Yeah. It depends on where you are as an actor. Uh, I, you can contact me if you want on that, but it's it's a many-stepped process to get an animation demo made. Mm -hmm. And second part, this is a quicker answer, I'm sure. Is it normal to slate for animation demos, for the actor to slate? For an animation demo, no. Oh, I'm sorry, animation audition. Audition. I said demo, sorry. Um, yeah, slating's an interesting one. I mean, it's like some people say, no, no, don't slate anymore. Uh, yes, I slate for animation auditions. Um, but if I know that they're looking for a kid and they know who I am, sometimes I'll slate afterwards just because I want to say, ha, ha, fooled you. Fooled you. I fooled you. <laughs> 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 but yeah, we slate for animation auditions unless specifically told not to. Mm -hmm. All righty. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Terry Briscoe asks, thank you so much for being here, Debbie, because... You You're know, welcome, Terry Briscoe. Especially now. Yeah, yeah Terry's always here, so you know, we're glad he's always here, too. Uh, are there any types of characters that you won't do, like drug addicts or political dictators or something like that? Um, it certainly depends. There are some auditions that I just don't do because I don't stand a chance in hell of booking it if I know who else is going to be auditioning for that. Um, they'll send me these auditions for gravelly, deep uh, British actors with gravitas. <laughs> <laughs> I could do this if I had to. But there's so many other people who would do it better that if I have a whole slew of auditions to do, I might select that one last. Mm -hmm. I won't do gun commercials, and I won't do commercials for people who I hate politically, and you all know who that is. <laughs> um, and uh, pretty much... I think there's only been one job that I've left because I was very unhappy with the way it was going. And 
Hardly any auditions I haven't done. I think they're all pretty, I don't know, uh, un unsighted. <laughs> and not too salacious. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's not really, a, I, I'll try anything. <laughs> I mean, and if you, if they book me for the kid and they get you for three roles anyway in the SAG contract, um, it's good to be able to have a lot of roles in your wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can do the old grandma. And yes, I could do that gravitas British woman. You know, it's not <laughs> the dog's growling. <laughs> I can do the dog. So stuck in the dog. Speaking of gravitas. Sorry, I do it for a living. <laughs> I'm a professional. <laughs> This one's from Craig Davis on YouTube. Talking character development, how do you know a character voice is good to go before an audition? I guess, how do you practice it? How do you feel confident in your I would say character? if you can fall into that character and live it for an hour a day until everybody in your house wants you to get out and is angry with you, we don't want to hear it anymore. So falling into that character is a really great way of... Um, knowing when you're ready. But I would say you need to be able to uh, span the gamut of, um, gamut of emotions with that character and be in that same voice for laughing, crying, anger, love, and not leave character. And it's hard. Sing. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. That's a good one. Uh, Catherine Jade Jarvie asks uh, for, uh, let's see, is there a, a genre of animation or gaming that you like doing more than another? Um, no. <laughs> I like it all. I love to work. I love my job. And I, I, I like it all. Uh, so I, I wish. I, I'm not keen on having to scream the whole time. But, yeah. um, and I think when a show is, every line is frenetic and at the top of the range where it's like migraine inducing, mm -hmm. that can be difficult. Yeah. But I just like uh, voiceover work. I like auditioning. You have to <laughs> like to audition. If you don't like auditioning and aren't good at it, um, get good at it and <laughs> get to where you like it. Because that's, I'd say 90% of my job. That's what I do. I just audition and edit yeah. mostly. <laughs> yeah, have you been doing much uh, commercial work? I mean, aside from all the animation stuff that you've been doing? Um, no, I audition a lot for commercials, but most of my work is in animation. Um, and if I do book commercials, my successful <laughs> ones have been animated commercials. <laughs> of which there are many. Yeah. <laughs> a couple more we can squeeze in real quick if we're fast. Julie Aoet or Aot. Uh, do you do an audition for a product political part you don't agree with, well, and you do you sell your one. soul? You kind of covered that. Yeah, you said yeah. there's going to be candidates you will not be working for. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's in anything, right? You know, you you. Uh, <coughs> what's the right way? I'm just losing all my words. But you want to gravitate towards that that you agree with and makes you feel good, and you can make a better world from it. Vaping commercials and be authentic. Probably yeah. not. Exactly. Be authentic. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Wishbone asks. Wishbone, that's... Is that that's a zero that's, for the That's o. a friend of mine. Oh, Wishbone. Okay. Zero. okay. Jacob's friend, Wishbone. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Jacob's friend, Wishbone. Yeah. What inspired you guys to get into voice acting and makes it... How do you make it into a career? Well... <laughs> <laughs> how many good, hours you got there, that's uh, a good Wishbone one to Zero? Uh, you got to make a choice. But if you love acting, I would say try everything and see where you start booking. Right. You know, I do on camera stuff. I do theatrical. I do commercial on camera. And I do commercial voiceover. And, but where I book is, I think, where I should be. Because the goal is to make a living doing this. Mm -hmm. So don't, I always say not to be afraid of your pigeonhole and embrace it. And, you know, kind of. Don't beat yourself up that you just sound that one way. Um, I've had students that cannot get out of their sound, and they have this very specific, unique, weird sound. 
weird, I mean that in a good way. Mm -hmm. it's and different. that's that's what they book. <laughs> right. And yeah, it's always worth it to try and get out of your uh your where your comfort comfort zone. Comfort zone. Yeah. But don't be embarrassed or afraid to embrace what God gave you. Yeah, you might end up being the voice of Marge Simpson. Yep. <laughs> Talk about a unique sound. And her sisters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> a little adjustment with that. But yeah. Uh, there, there's, oh, we got two more. I don't know how we much time, time do we have. Questions. Can we get two more? Yeah. So this one's from Patricia Andrea. How do you organize to remember the voices of characters? I guess this is if you have multiple roles in one thing. Is this a mental thing or um, is it just I don't know automatic? if she's talking about like uh, an episode of a cartoon where I do a lot of voices or yeah. where I have a lot of voices, uh, characters that live in my wheelhouse. Um, when people make their demos, they usually put their strongest characters on their animation demos. And those, it's like learning a song. You know, you listen to the Beatles album or your favorite album and you know what song that comes next. Absolutely. And your brain goes there. Well, when you hear your animation demo, I want you to memorize your animation demo and so that if the audition comes up, that it's for the old lady. You have the old lady on your demo and you know the words that go with it. Well, those few words are what boots you into her voice. And the same with any character. So hopefully you'll be able to use that as your springboard to launch right into that character and remain in that character. Mm -hmm. If you come to a job, I, I did one the other day and they said, um, it's a little boy, you're going in to read a little boy. And it was a, a, gig, a gig. So I went in and I uh, got behind the mic and I'm ready to read this part as a little boy. And they said, Oh, by the way, it's um, it's British. <laughs> okay, um, so I I I melded my British with my little boy voice, and then they said, "Oh, but the boy's a hundred years old." <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it took wow. me a minute, but wow. you you learn how to layer these things, like um, like if this was my teenage voice, this is the one I always go back to. Okay, so here's my normal teenage voice. But then she say, say, no, she has braces. Okay, so this teenage voice has braces. Great. But wait, she's from the South. Okay, so <laughs> I had this teenage voice with braces from the South. So I've just layered three things to create a different character. And you can do that with any age, speech impediment, accent, attitude, voice placement. But you have to be able to grab hold of that character you create and live in it, like I said. Right. Well, Debbie, if someone wants to get a hold of you mm -hmm. and perhaps study with you, yes. how would they do so? You can go to my website, debbiederryberry.com. Make sure you spell it right. D-E-B-I, <laughs> derryberry.com. Um, you can contact me there. And um, there's a lot of tabs on that website. And you can also book with me at calendly.com slash Debbie Derryberry. Um, happy to answer um, your questions on my website if I can. And uh, yeah. Read the book first, though. Yeah, read the book. Yeah. She said it. Read the book first. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not too expensive. <laughs> and really, it's, it's got everything I know. I poured it in here for you and guys. And it's the second edition. So. For you guys. And I also have the virtual class that goes with this. It's a three one-hour segments. And you can get them all at once, or you can get them one at a time as your budget affords. But uh, hopefully it will, you know, give you an insight into how I think um, it works in the voiceover business, just from my viewpoint, you know? Great. Well, thanks for being with us. And, Thank uh, you for having really me, appreciate Dan. It. It's always a pleasure having you on. Because we didn't get to play ukulele this time. I you know I was going to play my new song. Go to my YouTube channel and play... <laughs> I'm a great recycler for your kids. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thanks That's for having homework. me, guys. Alrighty. All right, George and I will be right back to wrap things up and rack it up for Tech Talk right after this. You're still watching VOBS? <laughs> In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. 
Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup, and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. And now, now we're, we're back. back. <laughs> it's always great having Debbie on the show because she she's she is the mm -hmm. business. She really, really is the business, and that's absolutely, uh, and that's why we have her on. Uh, let's see. Next week on the show, we have Tech Talk number ninety five, which we're about to do. Five. So you guys watching live, hang out and watch the show live, mm -hmm. and you can ask your questions. Uh, and then the week after that, Jason Lanier White has promised he will be here on January twenty third. Or February 23rd. Is that what it is? February 23rd? We're going to chain him to the door just in case. Exactly. No, it's January. No, February 6th, I think. February is 6th? Right. Okay. Yeah, we'll check the calendar. Might be on a Wednesday, in which case he's going to show up <laughs> on the wrong day. Uh, who are our donors of the week? Yeah, we got a few donors. Uh, Grace Newton. Robert Leadham. Stephen Chandler. Casey Clack. Jonathan Grant. Tom Pinto. Hey, Tom. Greg Thomas. A Doctor Voice. Antland Productions. Martha Kahn. 949 Designs. Christopher Epperson. Sarah Borges. Philip Sapir. Brian Page. Patty Gibbons. Rob Ryder. Shauna Pentington Baird. And Don Griffith. Trey Mosley. Dinah Birdsall. And Sandra Manwiller. Thank all you right. all. Thanks, guys. We appreciate you uh, donating to the show. It makes it technologically perfect. <laughs> At least we make allows us to try to make That's it right. we give it we give it our all yes we we have a vobs thing i mean a george the tech uh, webinar coming up it was supposed to be tomorrow it got pushed a week because of well we don't need to get into that <laughs> but it's got pushed a week but we're going to have um michael pearson adams from waves audio oh, have cool. an ask me anything it's totally free so just go to george the tech slash webinars and sign up to be there we're taking 100 seats 60 are booked Again, it's free, but we want to make sure everybody can get, ask at least one question. So Excellent. come on in and ask them anything you want to know about this audio processing stuff. Good. <laughs> All righty. And you can join our mailing list, too. Just go to our website and click on join our mailing list. Makes it really easy. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to thank our sponsors, too, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And, and World, World Voices. Voices. The Done. Industry Association Org of Freelance Voice Talent. Go join today. We need you there. And we have lots of great benefits for you there. Anyway, we're going to re-rack it for Tech Talk here. And so if you got a question for us, throw it in the chat room. We're going to have a lot of great questions tonight. And we've got lots of good stuff to cover. 
So before we go, yes, we got to thank our very special in studio. Oh well, we have to thank Jeff Holman for That's being right. here, <laughs> for doing our our, our uh, chat room monitoring, yeah, and of absolutely. course Sue Merlino for putting up with us. She gave boy, did she, we gave it to her tonight? <laughs> we did. Hey, here's a new camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, try this. <laughs> anyway, she handled it. Thank you so. You know, this is this is a difficult business, which is why we bring on people who really know how to do it, like Debbie Derryberry, and of course, we like to bring you all the good technical stuff because we've decided that if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard, and I'm George Whittem, and this is Voiceover Body Shop or V O B S. Take care, everybody. <laughs>